My next guest, wait, wait. Save your film student applause. <laughs> My uh, Pulitzer Prize uh, winning guest next there. That's something a bit more uh, classy. <laughs> Her latest book, uh, The Bully Pulpit, is in stores now. Please welcome the great Doris Kearns Goodwin. Everybody, Doris Kearns Goodwin. say you look sensational. Well, I would be glad to hear that I well, look sensational. Well, you do look sensational, I say. Someone that looks like that and could write like you do, you'll find a boyfriend in no time. <laughs> Why do you do that? Why do you throw those it's notes It's emblematic of my contempt for the format in which I work. I tear up the blue cards in order to say, I reject this, uh, but I need the own. money, so I stay here. <laughs> it's... Now, I read, uh, was it your last book, Team, Team of Rivals? Oh, yeah. Yeah, because you write one every seven, seven or eight years. This was seven, took ten years to write Lincoln. Yeah, you pick I'm up slow. the pace, pick up the no, pace, no. all right? I'm getting old, I'm getting old. So the, uh, no. Yeah. The, uh, the, I read Team of Rivals about Lincoln and his cabinet for the, uh, the, the, towards the end of the Civil War. Correct. Right, but the, oh, thank God I got that right. Um, <laughs> I'm about... A couple of hundred pages into this one. You've only got 600 more to go. He's yeah, you're right. <laughs> do, you, you know, you could, you could shorten it down. Uh, about the length of a tweet is what most people do. I'm old-fashioned. No, I need a lot of stories. I need time. You want it's, to live with these guys. Well, that's I have what to you, live with them. I want you to live with them. Do you ever get frustrated at their behavior? I'm already a bit into this, and I'm like, you know, Roosevelt, you shouldn't be doing this. You said, he said he wasn't going to run, and his big fat friend was like, oh, that's great, and now... And now <laughs> You know, I do get sad when these two guys who had been great friends yeah. when they were young, and then Teddy makes him president, runs his campaign, tells him how to run, tells him don't play golf, it's a rich man's game, yeah. don't ride on a horse, you know, you're a little fat to be he on a He was 350 pounds. Sometimes, yeah. 350 pounds, man. There. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, look at your horse, right? Yeah, yeah. So there was one time when he was riding on a horse up 5,000 feet, and he sent a cable back to Washington saying, the, I had a great time. It was a beautiful scenery. And then they sent him back, how's the horse? Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then there's another time where the horse sort of collapsed, and somebody wrote to him and said, you really should ride on an elephant, or you should learn about this newfangled thing called automobiles. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But he was, no, a good, he, he was a good he, guy. No, yeah, he, was our, he was a decent president. Though, no, and he? not only that, but when he was happy, he was thin. Like when he graduated from Yale, he was 250. Then when he was sad as president, he was 350. I then do he becomes, that. Do you go up and down? Yes. Yeah. When I get unhappy, I'm... I, I, you eat. Yes. Yeah. A lot of people do. He yeah. did. Yeah. But you're not that fat. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> I didn't mean it that way. <laughs> Honest. I just meant. What did you say? <laughs> now, when you, when you, I mean, they're they're uh, hugely researched. Do you do all this research yourself? No, I've got a person who worked for me you for five years. Right? Oh yeah, yeah and I then mean, a couple. It... You have a little team. Yep. You ever thought? I mean, is this one going to be a movie? Because the, well, the team of rivals. Spielberg has acquired the rights for it already. Right. Movie, so, so, do you ever think? Do you ever add? Think oh, I'll just put an alien in or something just to. <laughs> Well, you know, there was a book after I wrote the Lincoln book. There was Lincoln as a Vampire. Vampire Hunter. Right, yeah. Vampire Hunter. So somebody said to me, how come you worked on this book for 10 years and you didn't know that Lincoln was a vampire? Yeah. <laughs> so, there was a gap in the research <laughs> there. There was a big gap. In I the research. saw both movies. I saw uh, Team of Rivals and, and I saw the Vampire Hunter movie. I think you edged them out, but, uh, you know... Was, was, was Daniel Day-Lewis amazing? That, I mean, he's, he's... I think he's got a future. I, I don't know if the film <laughs> students would agree, but... You know, when I went to the movie set, you weren't allowed to talk to him as Daniel. He was just Mr. Lincoln the yeah, whole time. So we had pictures in the costume department where there'd be Mary Todd Lincoln and Sally Field and Thaddeus Stevens and blah, blah, blah. But then there'd just be Lincoln Lincoln. So really? he became Lincoln. And for that whole period of time, it was an amazing performance. Do you, uh, do you feel when you... Because you write very closely about these men. I mean, really very interesting. Oh, I'm person. living with them. I wake up with them. I right. go to sleep with them. Really? I mean, do you... I mean, it seems... It, it is an odd profession to spend one days and nights with dead presidents, but I wouldn't change well, my only fear. No, not all of them. Only like five of them. I, yeah. I'm not. I'm pretty monogamous when I'm with them. 
But the no, I meant LBJ. You oh. knew LBJ. Oh, no, I, I did really know him. Yeah, I, was, yeah. <laughs> I didn't mean that that way. Yeah. <laughs> I was a... I was a 24-year-old White House intern. You were a 24-year-old White House intern. He I was mean, the president. Yeah. So, anything go on? Well, <laughs> he, well, the one time, I was worried because he did have somewhat of a moonizing reputation. Right. But everything was going great. I kept telling him about steady boyfriends even when I didn't have them. Everything working perfectly. One day, he, he wants to discuss our relationship. He takes me to the lake. There's wine check tablecloth, all the romantic trappings, and he starts out, <laughs> Doris, more than any other woman I've ever known, and my heart sank. And then he said, you remind me of my mother. It was okay. so embarrassing. That's safe, though. That's safe. Then well, you know things are going to be all right after except that. Except the, or... the mother was kind of this big-bosomed woman and tall. I mean, I didn't look like her much. So it was an odd come online, wasn't it? Hey, he was Have the president. He was probably line? out of practice. He's like... <laughs> I'm the president. <laughs> Want a sandwich? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go for a picnic. <laughs> so, uh, but do you, I mean, like, when you met Daniel Day-Lewis when he was living inside, uh, uh, you know, Abraham Lincoln, did you feel that, that, that you were getting to see the physical manifestation of this no, man that you really dealt did, with? No, I really did, because the thing is, when I live with these guys for so long, you really do imagine them talking, walking. When I was working on Franklin and Eleanor, I, my kids would come in sometimes and they'd hear me say, Franklin, just be nicer to Eleanor, she loves you. Or, Eleanor, stop worrying about that affair Franklin had so long ago. <laughs> and I'd say to Teddy Roosevelt the same thing, you know, where do you get your energy? Energy from Teddy. He was the most magnetic, energetic guy. They you said get, he drank. I, I mean, there's a very strong sense that I know very little about the presidents. That you'd you know. love this guy. Yes, yeah, I think I would. Yeah, That's what I'm getting. He's your kind of guy. He yeah, really is. I mean, he's athletic. Well, well. Uh, <laughs> and, and also, Doris, not that fat. Uh, <laughs> no, but I mean, he could do everything. He loved birds. He was a well. I like I like birds, so I I should be the president. Uh, <laughs> No, he, and they say he drank 40 cups of coffee a day. He I gave Maxwell it. House the slogan, good to the very last drop. Really? But he's the most colorful guy I've ever written about, I think. And this guy, Taft, is a much decenter... That's not a word, grammar-wise. Um, it's a more decent... Doris Carroll's yeah. good when it's a <laughs> word now. Said. It's fine. <laughs> you've, re you've reached the point in your career where if you say the word decenter, they go, all right, well, Doris <laughs> said it. It's a word. <laughs> Put it down. It's good. It's good. It's a... It's an extraordinary... It is an extraordinary gift you have for bringing history to life in such a, an entertaining and epic way. I, I, will you continue to do this? No. No? <laughs> of, course, of course I will. But I, I just know, mean, no. is there another president? Oh, is there a dead president in your future? Well, there's not too many great ones left. I mean, I've done Lincoln, I've done FDR, I've done JFK, I've done LBJ. May I suggest James Millard K. Gilmore? Polk? No. no. Actually, Polk is a big guy. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, no, yeah because the a... annexing the Western yeah, colonies, yeah. and he didn't run for a second term. Now, how do you just... know about Polk? Well, because there's a They Might Be Giants song about James K. Polk, so oh. I... <laughs> So that's the only one I kind of know about. But you know what my favorite song about Taft is in the campaign of 1908? So remember that he's 350 pounds. The, the song, it, incredibly, was, get on a raft with Taft. If you got on a raft with Taft, you wouldn't be on the raft very long. <laughs> <laughs> but there was that Polk song. They have songs about all these guys. Yeah, I mean, it was like, it's just electioneering, right? It was yeah. the same thing. I mean, do you think it had more dignity then than it does now? I think that the private lives of our public figures, speaking of our crack cocaine friend in Toronto, yeah. were, were not shown in the same way. So that, you know, I, I, and what matters? What matters is their public responsibilities. I mean, the fact this guy lied, I mean, he's finished, I think. Right, but course, other than yeah. that, I mean, do we want Richard Nixon, who probably never smoked crack cocaine, but was corrupt as a president? Yeah. Or do you want somebody who had a little sex on the side and did a little smoking, but was a good president? So we you're saying that... their public responsibilities. So let me get this right, what you're saying is... What we're saying then is, if if Nixon had only done a bump or two, he might have known. He might have been a lot. He might better. have relaxed yeah. a little. He could yeah. have forgotten about Watergate. Yeah. He wouldn't have had those terrible tapes. Hold on just a second. Where CBS am I going? in no way endorses <laughs> Doris Kearns Goodwin's views on the presidency. <laughs> I, however, think she makes a fair point. <laughs> Doris, we're out of time. Uh, congratulations again on Thank another you. masterpiece. You. Yeah, another masterpiece. Amazing. At and least another fat book. <laughs> no, it's it, it's it's amazing what you do. It's really, truly unique and amazing. Congratulations. Thank you. And Thank you. Please Thank continue you. to do it. Doris Cairns, good one.